DFT has been manufacturing world-class severe service control valves and axial flow non-slam check valves for over 75 years. The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of disassembly, parts replacement, and reassembly of the High 100 control valve, which can be done in line and with no special tools. For full detailed instructions, please refer to DFT's High 100 installation and maintenance manual, which can be found online at dft-valves.com in the resource section. It is recommended to have a full repair kit available prior to servicing the valve. Before starting, it is important to follow all required lockout tagout protocols prior to performing any service on the DFT valves. Warning. No pressure can be present or applied to this valve assembly during service or repair. DFT recommends regular review and maintenance of your control valve. The first step in the disassembly process is to remove the actuator from your High 100 control valve. To start disassembly, move the actuator to the closed position. Disconnect other connections as needed. These include air supply, then the positioner and switches. Disconnect the stem from the valve by removing the split coupler. Remove the actuator. Mark the body and bonnet so they can later be reassembled in the same orientation. To remove the valve packing, Refer to the High 100 Installation and Maintenance Manual, page 16, and follow industry standards for packing. Remove the bonnet nuts and the bonnet from the body. Take out the ball, cage, and stem. Take care to ensure the cage and ball are controlled once they are clear of the valve. Remove the body bonnet seal. Remove the cartridge, taking care to ensure even removal. Seat gaskets will come out at this point and are not reusable. Discard the seat gaskets. Unscrew the guide pin and remove the guide pin gasket. Again, gaskets are not reusable. Discard the gaskets. Take out the wear bushings and wear bushing gaskets. Discard the gaskets. The aid of a screwdriver and needle nose pliers may be helpful to remove the wear bushing. Also, curved nosed pliers may be helpful in removing the gasket. Now that your High 100 is disassembled, the parts can be inspected. Generally, sealing surfaces should be smooth and no cracks should appear in any of the components. Wear bushings should be replaced as needed. Detailed inspection procedures can be found in the High 100 Installation and Maintenance Manual. If this is the first time the valve is being serviced, the cartridge can be rotated 180 degrees. What was previously the unused upstream seat now becomes the downstream seat. The downstream seat is the surface the ball comes in contact with upon shutoff. 
If new seats are required, please refer to page 15 of the HI-100 Installation and Maintenance Manual. After inspection, prepare all parts for reassembly. New seals should be used in all locations. Install the wear bushings and wear bushing seals. Applying a coat of grease or lubricant, white lithium grease for spiral wound metal gaskets or silicone base o-ring lubricant will aid in ensuring these components stay in place during assembly. With the seal in place, screw the guide pin into the bottom of the valve. Coat the wear bushing and seat faces with a layer of grease to aid assembly. Then insert the cartridge assembly with seat gaskets in place. Install the bonnet seal. Place the stem, ball and cage into the valve. Then lower the bonnet over the stem and ensure it is aligned and level. After the bonnet is level, tighten the bonnet bolts. See Appendix E for torque values. Refer to the HI-100 Installation and Maintenance Manual, page 31. Install the valve packing. Refer to the HI-100 Installation and Maintenance Manual, page 20. Mount the valve actuator. This is a position-seated valve, not a force-seated valve. The actuator does not have to provide the force to seat the valve that is required to seat globe-style control valves. The actuator on the HI-100 straight-through Venturi-style control valve only has to provide enough force to place the ball into the center of the flow stream. The pressure in the flow stream generates the force required to shut the valve. If you apply too much force from the actuator, it can result in damage to internal components such as the stem, the cage, the ball, or the guide pin, so caution must be taken when setting the stroke on the actuator. Overstroking the valve or applying excessive actuator force may damage the internal components of the valve. If you have any questions about mounting or setting the actuator, contact DFT. Ensure the actuator is in the closed position. Ensure the stem is fully down, resting lightly on the ball. There should be a gap between the actuator stem and valve stem. Install the first half of the split coupler, ensuring both actuator and valve stem have equal engagement. Complete the split coupler installation, ensuring the bolts are finger tight. Rotate the split coupler for clearance. Tighten the split coupler and jam nut and your valve is ready to use. Specify DFT control valves for your severe service applications. To view our complete selection of control valves, visit us online at dft-valves.com.